Hey everybody, Joe DIY here, and today we're going to be restoring this 1960 Tonka service truck. Now as you can see, the truck is uh, pretty complete here. We are missing a wheel, and based on the fact that the head's still on here, it looks like that wheel probably either rotted apart, dry rotted apart, or um, somebody somehow cut it off there or pulled it off, but um, we can go ahead and uh, remedy that situation. Um, other than that, the truck's complete. There's normally a ladder that would go in the top here. That seems to be missing, but other than that, the truck is uh, in good shape. Okay, so we can begin the disassembly by taking apart the wheels. I find that to be the easiest step when you're going to take this apart. Um, we can see that based on these wheels, the white walls are pretty dry rotted and cracked, so we're, we know we're not gonna be able to save those. And the rubber on the tire here is already chipped. It's beginning to crack. Um, these are gonna come apart as I start taking these wheels apart. So these probably aren't gonna be salvageable. The only thing I might be able to use are these center caps here because I can remove the rust and maybe powder coat them or polish them. So to begin, we're gonna to wanna to go and remove the white walls. Now because these are damaged, like I said, I'm not gonna to go too crazy trying to save these. So we're just gonna pop a screwdriver in here. And just go ahead and pry this out. Now, if you're somebody who wanted to try to salvage yours, um, I would recommend using a heat gun to kind of warm up the rubber, make sure you don't damage it, and you could kind of pry at the front to get that out. But, you know, it stayed in one piece, but because of all these cracks, there's really not much we can do for this. We'll set that aside. Now again, on this side, we're gonna pry out the rubber. There's no crack in this tire already made, so we're just going to slide the screwdriver in. And the goal is to slide it. Actually, we can take a pick. And just kind of pull that out a little bit. There we go. Pop that out. And lastly, we just have the rear. Um, like I said earlier, we're already missing this wheel here, so we're gonna have to replace that all together. And we're out. Okay, so the next step in taking this apart is to get the axle out so we can remove the wheels. Now Tonka made their axle stamped on one side with kind of a mushroomed end so that the tire couldn't slide off. On this side, you can see it's a pretty big mushroomed end that isn't really gonna grind off easy. But on the other side, there's a very small lip to grind and then there's this washer behind it to kind of keep it in place. If we grind that off, we can put some sort of axle on that later to hold the wheel apart. So I have my rotary tool here. You can use any rotary tool, grind, or anything you want, but I find a uh, cordless rotary tool works the best. And I just have a coarse grinding bit on here. Okay. We have the lip ground off. The wheel should come right off. And so it does. Now, we can take that axle right out. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove the front axle. You can see here that the washer is kind of fused to the end of that axle. So I found the best way to remove that, or at least free it up, is to take a small socket and just give it a light tap with a hammer. You don't wanna damage any of the metal under here, you just wanna break that loose. Here it's broken loose. There's not that much room, but enough that I can get the grinding bit around that and be able to slide it off. So we'll go ahead and grind that off next. And it looks like we have two washers behind that one, which, um, to be honest, I haven't seen yet in a vehicle, so this is kind of odd. I don't know if this is something somebody would have added or if this was at the factory, but we have two washers here. Interesting. So, the wheel's off, and we'll just slide out this other side. 
and it's as easy as that. So when I'm working on these, I usually try to remove the body before I get to the cab. It just makes things easier down the line. Um, to remove this body here, we have a combination of rivets and tabs on the bottom of this. So we'll go ahead and start with those rivets. I'm just again going to take my grinding tool and I'm just going to take the mushroom then off the top of that rivet. That'll allow me to pop it out the bottom um, and free this up. Okay, and I was mistaken. These two tabs here, I believe, are for the inner fenders of the body. So, this should lift right off now. There we go. Let's see if we can rock it. There we go, nice and easy. If we want to fully disassemble this body, we're going to need to take apart these tabs. Right, so we have one, two, three, four tabs here, and one tab on each side. And that should let us take out this entire base as well as the inner fenders. So, let's start with that. This can be a little tough to get at position-wise. I found find the best way to get them is to kind of get a little screwdriver under it and twist up enough that you'll be able to fit a larger tool in there. Okay. And then lastly, we want to Straighten that out. And straighten that piece out. Okay, we have our four sets of tabs here removed. Uh, now we can go ahead and work on these tabs on the side. Again, I'm just gonna work my way under them the best I can. Straighten them out. my way under. And straighten them out just like that. And now this whole thing should come right apart. Okay, those are out. We have our last two parts of the body here, little tabs. They're probably a little seized up after sitting for a few years. But that's okay. And there we go. So we have the outer portion of the body separated. Uh, this appears to just be one piece of stamped steel formed in place. So this is nice. There's no spot welds we have to worry about on this piece. And that seems to be the same for this one, which is great going to make our job powder coating this a lot easier. Right, so now we can go ahead and remove these inner fender pieces. Just wiggle them out. All right, that wasn't too bad. Usually these trucks fight you a little more after they've been sitting all these years. So this one was pretty, pretty good to us today. All right, so here we have our four body pieces. We've taken the whole body apart, um, and we kind of lucked out on this one. A lot of Tonka trucks have uh, spot welds all in their bodies that really make it tough to take apart. Um, you really don't want to be taking apart uh, spot welds unless you absolutely have to. So these are all just put together with rivets and tabs, no damage, so um, I'm very happy about this. Uh, let's move on to taking apart the rest of the truck. So these Tonka trucks are pretty easy to take apart. Um, this part going forward is going to be standard for all your, you know, Tonka trucks, Tonka pickups based on the F-Series Fords and even some of the later ones. Most of these are just held on with the one tab in the back, which we undid earlier. I thought that was initially part of the uh, rear part of the body. Sometimes they have ones that go through that and the two connect, uh, holding the body and the cab to the chassis in that same way. Um, this one was not the case, so we already skipped that step. Um, in the front here, we have two rivets, and that's holding the bumper onto the body and the body onto the chassis. So let's go ahead and we'll grind those rivets off with our Dremel tool. Okay. 
Okay, our rivets are off. Let's go ahead and see if we can pop the front of this truck off. Apply a little pressure to the bumper here. We don't want to break anything. And there we go. Hidden behind the bumper are two tabs. Uh, this is the front of the chassis. It mounts through the front of the truck. We're going to have to bend these out so we can slide that cab off. Just like we did on all the other ones. Let's put a screwdriver behind it. Pry it out best we can. And we'll finish bending them with a set of pliers. Great. Let's go ahead and slide this cab forward. Now sometimes these do take a little bit of motivating to get them moving. They've been sitting over the years and kind of everything's fusing together. So hopefully this one will come off easy. Let's give it a try. All right, not too bad. All right, we got the cab off. Here's the chassis. Um, you know, if you've restored a few of these, you're probably very familiar. These are standard across pretty much all their trucks. So it doesn't matter if you have a pickup truck, a steak body truck, or the service truck, you're gonna have uh, pretty much the same cab and chassis. The only thing that changes between them is the body and obviously the colors and some of the other small options. But at their heart, they're all pretty similar. So now we're on the last part, it's just the cab. These are pretty easy to take apart. We're gonna first start by taking this grill off. These grills are just held in place by uh, the headlights. Um, on the back of the headlight, you can see we have these small plastic tabs. So what I usually do, I take a flathead screwdriver and I just kind of push on it to kind of force the tabs together. And once you get them together, I'm going to just push a little, little bit of force down. Sometimes, too, you can use pliers and kind of squeeze them. And there we go. First one's out, no damage. Do that for the other one. Push the tab in. Oh, that one came out nice and easy. Do it on these last two. One, and two. All right, so now we have the last two parts of this truck to take apart. We have the windshield and the roof. The windshield is just snapped in place underneath the roof, so that's gonna be pretty easy. Now these are held in with four tabs in each corner. We're only gonna have to bend out the front two tabs as it'll allow us to kind of pivot the roof out and make it a little easier taking it apart, putting it back together. These tabs here, we can see we got a little bit of, a little bit of wildlife living in here. All we're going to do is straighten these tabs out. Tonka never really bent these from the factory. They kind of put them in and twisted them, which makes it a little easier for us. We really want to kind of, when, when we're twisting these out, move them around a little bit too. That breaks some of that rust free. These are one of those parts that tend to seize up the more they sit. And we'll break that one free. Great. Let's see if we can pop it out. All right, this roof's in there pretty good. So sometimes when these are seized up, they do need uh, a little bit of persuasion to get out. So I usually take a small ball peen. You don't want to hit it too hard. You don't want to rebend the tab. If you bend tabs too many times, they will break off on you. So and we just want to. We just want to take it, just give it a little tap. All we're trying to do is just free up that rust. There we go, we broke it free. Tap's starting to come out. This side was already pretty loose. And there we go. Okay, so there we have it. Now what we'll do is we'll take these parts over to my other shop where I keep my sandblaster and my powder coater. We'll give these a good, you know, good cleaning, remove all the rust, remove all the paint, give them a nice coat of primer, uh, get a coat of powder coat on there.
Okay, so now all parts have been sandblasted and powder coated. I think they came out pretty good. I used Prismatic Powders Old Timer Blue, and that seems to be a pretty good match for that original. So now that these are done, we can go on and start working on some of the other components that we need to finish up this truck. Okay, so what we want to do next is clean up the grill and the bumper so that it has a nice shine to it when we put it back together. Now, you can see there's all this rust on the grill here. We're going to need to go ahead and remove that. Um, I've mentioned in the past that you can, you know, sand it down or blast it um, and do a chrome powder coat or maybe replate it. But we're going to see if we can salvage the original plating. So, what I have here is some rust remover. Now you can get whatever your favorite rust remover is and use that. You can use uh, white vinegar and salt. Uh, that's a good mixture. Um, but I prefer MC51. Um, full disclosure, they do support my channel by providing this to me, but I wouldn't use it if I didn't like it. And I've found compared to other rust removers that it works a lot quicker. So we're gonna use that for this. So I have my beaker here. I'm gonna put our parts in and we're just gonna fill it up. Okay, so we have both parts fully submerged in the rust remover, and we can see eh, it's kind of starting to react a little bit. We'll check on this in a few minutes and see how it's doing. But while this is removing the rust, we're going to talk about replacement parts. Now, earlier you saw that those wheels I took off, those wheels and uh, white wall tires there, were in pretty tough shape, and I really don't think I'm going to be able to salvage them, and any work I do to them isn't going to bring them back to that nice original shine. So I went online and I went to GasolineAlleyToys.com, and that's where I picked up uh, a brand new set of tires, white walls, and caps uh, for this truck. And go ahead and take those out. So, nice brand new tires, nice new white wall inserts, and some new zinc plated caps. I've also went ahead and bought the decals we're going to need to finish the job. Uh, these are just standard decal stickers that stick on, and a new windshield because the one we have, it, it might be salvageable, but there's a couple deep scratches I'd just rather not worry about and just start fresh. Start with a nice new windshield. Um, now. I, I, a lot of people ask me where I buy my parts. Most of them I do get from Gasoline Alley Toys or eBay, uh, but 90% of them are from Gasoline Alley Toys. Um, and I want to say now I have zero affiliation with them. They're just a really good source to buy parts. So if you're looking for them, you can try Gasoline Alley. Uh, Thomas Toys is another company. And then a lot of people sell their own parts that they make on eBay. So you can go with those. All right, so our parts have been sitting in the rust room over here for a few hours. We're going to go ahead and take them out. Now our bumper wasn't too bad to begin with, so I wasn't expecting a lot out of that. It did seem to shine up a little bit in the rust remover, but uh, took out some of the rusting that was in some of these uh, rivet holes here. And let's see. And the grill looks pretty good. Most of the rust is off, but I bet that'll... Yeah, most of that will rub right off. So that's not too bad. And then off camera, I threw the axles in here. Figured why not? Usually I hit these with a wire brush, but I figured we'll see what they can do. Let's see. And yeah, that did a pretty good job. It was pretty, pretty rotted, pretty rusted up. So I wasn't expecting a whole lot out of that. I'll still have to hit this with the wire brush, but it'll be a little easier going forward. So now that we have these cleaned up, let's head over to the buffing wheel and see if we can put a little shine on these. Alright, so we have all our bright work uh, polished up and ready to go. Um, we have all our parts together here. Um, I gave the lights just a quick wash off screen, nothing worth looking at. Um, but we're ready to assemble, so we're going to go ahead and uh, whenever I do my assembly, I always tend to start with the cab. Um, I like to get the windshield and the roof all installed and then I can move on to the chassis. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with that. So first thing we're going to do is take our replacement windshield and just place that right where it needs to be. Line that up. You can take our roof. These tabs in the back don't need to be bent. You can just put them in like that. Make sure they fit in. Twist it forward. 
and everything should just snap into place. Now that the roof is in position, you can flip it over, and we're just going to twist the tabs kind of like how they were before. Um, you'll see here on my uh, pliers, I have some masking tape just so I don't scratch anything. We don't want to ruin that nice new powder coat. I'll give that a little twist, and we'll just twist that. Great, now the roof's all set, now we can move on to holding on the grill. The grill on these trucks, just line up, put them right where you think they go, and they're held in place with the headlight pieces. So we'll pop those in now. Okay, and that's four. So we have our grill, we have our headlights. Now we can move on to the chassis. All right, so now we're ready to put the cab on the chassis. You have two tabs on the front and one tab in the rear, and these have to line up on the cab. So in the front of the cab, you have your two holes here, and you have the tab in the back that'll go in here. We wanna to try to line the three of those up the best we can, and then slide the cab in. The most important one is the the notch on the rear here, the tab on the rear, this one usually gives you the most trouble. Let's see if we can do it in one shot. Almost. Let's try it again. Okay, got the tab lined up in the rear, tabs in the front. Okay, and it's locked on. Okay, now that the cab is on the chassis, we're gonna wanna bend these tabs here in the front. I found the best way to do that is take your pliers with the tape and just kind of start the bend. And just work them out a little bit. And then I have a special hammer here that has a nylon end on it. And this will allow me to tap those tabs without doing any damage to the paint. And I'm not going to go too crazy trying to push these over, just so they're out of the way of the bumper and that we can mount it properly. So, next we're going to need our bumper. Uh, a couple rivets. These are hollow end rivets. This is what they used to use in a lot of the Tonka toys and old pinball machines. Um, anything with just this hollow rivet here that would mushroom over. And last, we're going to need our Pintonka tool. Now, I get a lot of questions. What is this tool? What does it do? Um, essentially, it's a special C-clamp with two forming dies on each end. And this allows you to crimp, um, crimp these hollow, hollow end rivets. Uh, now, this is specific one is called the Pintonka tool. It's made by Arbor Time. There are some other... Uh, cheaper alternatives out there, but this is a great tool. It's one of those things you get what you pay for. So, let's line these up. I'll do one rivet at a time. And probably should use a towel. Now, I've found the easiest way to put these in is to put the truck upside down. We don't want to scratch that nice new powder coat. So, let's put down a towel, give ourselves a nice soft surface to work on, and we can apply the bumper with the rivet. And I'm just going to do one at a time. Take one, line it up, and we're all lined up. Take the tool. Now, you, what you normally want to do is the end that you're mushrooming is the end you want to be turning on. So, in this case, that would be, the, the mushroom end would be on this end. That's where you want to use the tool. But, if I were to use the tool that way, I would be inside the, the bed of the truck, and that's really tough to use. Now, there's a, um, there's a nut end on this where you could put a socket and try to work it in here, but it's really tough to do that with just two hands. So I do it this way. You do have the potential to scratch some of your chrome work. You just got to go slow. Be careful. We'll turn that in. Okay, we're making contact on both ends of the rivet. And now we'll crimp. You don't need to go crazy. 
just till you feel it firm up, and then you can back off the rivet tool. And right there, it's, it's pretty firm. So we'll do the other side again. Put that in. Line up the tool. I go on just till both ends of the tool are touching the rivet. And then we'll snug it up. And right there we're snug. Back off the tool. And there we go. The bumper's fully mounted with the original rivets. Oh, the original body was uh, four pieces. So we'll start with these uh, these kind of bench fender looking parts. Now I don't think it matters which side I put these on. It looks like where this is bent out, this would have went in this end. So we'll slide that in. Just press it in. Okay, that's in place. Do the same on this side. Again, this is the one that's bent out. So it looks like that would go in on this corner here. And those are through. Now like I said before, um, I'm going to take my pliers. I'm going to start the bend. I'm not going to do it all the way so I can finish it with my uh, plastic tipped hammer after. Do that with this end as well. All right, now the last step is to put the top back on the bed. This end here, where the ladder goes, is going to be mounted out the back. And we can just slide this on. We have our tabs in the front that are going to locate it, and these tabs in the rear. All right, we have all four sets of tabs in. Now these front ones don't need to get bent over, but these rear ones are going to fold over towards the side of the truck. So we can do that now. And again, plastic tipped hammer so we don't damage anything. Okay, now the body's all back together. Let's go ahead and mount that back on the truck. Now, this is held in place with a couple of rivets, so let's line it up. And it looks like we have two rivets here and one deep inside here. So we're going to do our best to get that one that's way in there. I might have to use a standard punch rivet. Um, I'm not going to be able to pin fit this Pintaka tool in there, um, and that unfortunately is a limitation of this. But we'll do the best with what we have. And I believe on the disassembly, our rivet crimped end was on this end, so I'm going to do my best to match that. Okay, we have our rivet lined up. Bring in our Pintanka tool. Okay, our tool's lined up. We can uh, go ahead and crimp.
All right, that's one down, one to go to our last one here. Line up our tool. And we'll tighten that up. Okay. There we go. Body's mounted. Now it's starting to look like something. All right, so mounting the wheels on these is pretty easy. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start with our reproduction wheel from uh, Gasoline Alley Toys. And we're going to take one of our cleaned up axles, feed that through, and we'll just mount that through the front of the chassis here. Okay, we'll take our other wheel and put that on. And now because we ground off the end of this earlier, uh, we're going to need to put something on here to hold the wheel on. So, here we have push on lock rings um, that I got from an upholstery supply. You, you can buy something similar from uh, most toy reproduction companies. They'll give you these little rings or they might give you um, an axle end cap like this that pushes on. These are a little too big for this application, but um, so we're gonna use these. And to do that, just line it up. Take a socket and just kind of tap it on a little bit. And there we go. That should hold. With that on, we'll take our new white wall insert and our new cap. The cap just pushes into the white wall from the front. See, it kind of folds over it. And we can just push this into place. And we'll do that again on the other side. Got our new insert, got our new cap. And we'll put that in. And we'll do the rears. I'm gonna put try to put the uh, the lock cap. Uh, lock ring on the same side of the truck. Not that it matters, but I like to be consistent. Feed that through. Put the other wheel on. We have our lock ring. Put on a little bit. Give it a little tap with the brass end of the hammer. Okay, and that's installed. We'll do the last set of caps. All right, now we're almost done. Last step is to put the decals on. So we have our Tonka door decals. Um, you have to look up exactly what your truck you have to figure out which door decal you're gonna need. Um, and at the end of this video, I'll go over how you can try to figure out what year your truck is, um, kind of of this generation Tonka truck. We'll go over some of the features on it and I'll be able to help you narrow down what year your truck is exactly. Um, so we're gonna do this the best we can on camera. This is kind of a tough angle. And we'll see if we can line this up. All right, our decals are on. The last piece we need is the ladder. Now this was an accessory that would have been given out uh, with the truck when you bought it new. Mine was missing, so I sourced this online. 
That just slides into the back. Comes out the front. And there we have it. We have one completed Tonka service truck. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, there's a few things you can learn about these trucks just looking at some of the features on it. This particular model happens to be a 1960. How do I know that? Tonka started making this style truck in 1958 and changed it a few times throughout the years. In 1958 and 1959, Tonka had a four ribbed hood. It would be four equal sections going across the front here, uh, and this truck doesn't have that. This truck has three sections, so that tells me it's not a 58 or 59. Tonka also did not use white wall tires until 1959, so that's going to rule out 1958. Um, another thing here on the front is this bumper and this grill. Uh, 58 through 60, Tonka had this kind of flat bumper um, with no T or any embossment on it, and it also had these hooks here and the grill has the embossed T on the front. In 1961, Tonka got rid of the T on the grill and switched to a little more ornate bumper with the T mounted where your license plate would go. So based on all those details, I know this is a 1960. Um, now, if you have a truck that's, you know, uh, a similar vintage, that should help you narrow down the year. So there you have it. That's how we know this is a 1960. We got it back to its original glory and um, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, now, please let me know what you guys think of this video format. I know this is different. Usually we do the silent ASMR style restorations, but I thought we would try something a little different. I get a lot of questions on my videos, and I figured this would help answer a lot of those. Um, so please let me know what you think down below. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Feel free to like the video and uh, check out more content. And uh, maybe let me know what you guys want to see in the future for projects. Um, I have quite a few Nylant uh, sitting on my bench ready to be restored. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm happy to show off some of the tools I use. Um, I'd like to do a shop tour, and uh, we also hit 100,000 recently. So uh, thank you guys for sticking around for that. And um, when my plaque shows up, I'll do a video of that showing that off. So uh, until the next restoration, thanks guys for watching.